Okay, I, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. Guys, it's uh, 6 o'clock and um, we're scheduled to go till 7 p.m. for this process. So I think we're going to go ahead and get started. So if people want to uh, come a little closer, we have a presentation here and then we'll, uh, we'll invite you to have some conversations with uh, ourselves and, st and uh, the committee after the presentation is complete. So thank you all for coming tonight. Um, this is the uh, capacity release study, the public information uh, session for the Johnny Cake Elementary School capacity release study. Um, I am Matthew Cropper with Cropper GIS Consulting, and I've been uh, the, the contractor working with the school district and also with the committee throughout this entire process. Uh, tonight's purpose is for you all to learn how the community-based boundary study has, process has been working, to review some draft. Uh, boundary options for elementary schools in the study area, which you'll see that we have maps in the back for you to be able to get close to the map and talk with us about them, as well as statistics. Most importantly, we'd like you to complete an online survey related to options uh, that gives us uh, really valuable input. Um, it's important also to note that, that people can participate in this process if they're not here tonight. Um, this is all being live streamed, and, uh, and, the, and the, the, the presentation will be recorded. So when you do go home, you can tell your neighbors and friends and family and other people who live in this area what's going on. They can all go online and, and participate in this process, even if they're not here. Um, so to start, uh, what is a boundary change study? So the boundary is a line that defines a school attendance area. It's, an, it's a region that makes up a, a school's attendance area, and if you live inside that region, um, you go to that school. It's guided by policy and rule 1280. Um, the study is uh, facilitated by an independent consultant, which is uh, us, proper GIS consulting. Um, but it's driven by a community-based committee uh, made up of principals, teachers, and parents. So we have uh, people from, from all over the region um, and uh, representatives and people who can give us perspectives on what traffic is like in different areas of the district district and the study area and things like that and w through uh, through working with this group and as and us as consultants and also staff we go through an objective examination of data we create options and with a, a in a collaborative manner and then uh, basically deliberate on scenarios and then we engage the greater community uh, through a process uh, like we're doing tonight um, the public is always welcome to come to these meetings as well all the committee meetings but tonight's process is really for the public designed for you. Um, and then finally, the, this committee will be recommending a, 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 a boundary change uh, recommendation to the Board of Education. So as I said, we are Cropper GIS Consulting. We're based out of Ohio, but we do this work all over the country. We work with districts with 1,000 to 200,000 students all over, and we've done a lot of work in Baltimore County and, uh, and, and honored to be working with this, with this uh, county and the communities in this area. So the committee's uh, roles and responsibilities are to represent each school community. Uh, we do ask committee members to take off their parent hat or the teacher hat or the principal hat, put on the committee member hat when they come around the table, and focus on a plan that's be that best meets the needs of all children in the area, not just their particular area. So that focuses what's the best plan for the, for the entire area. Uh, this committee is expected to meet four times, and we've already met three times. We have one more meeting. And, uh, and they work together through a whole a process of, of, of exploring and developing options. And they will be presenting the recommendation to the Board of Education via the community superintendent in a, um, in a few months. This is where we are in the process. So as you can see, we've had three meetings so far. And this is our public information session. We'll have one more meeting in April where the committee will finalize their recommendations. And then the, the recommendations will be presented to the Board of Education in May. And then once that presentation is made to the Board of Education, they have some time to, de to think about it and deliberate. They will have a public hearing in mid-May to invite the public to come talk to the Board and express any thoughts and concerns they have. And the Board is expected to finalize a vote in June on, on the changes that are being recommended. A little bit about this area. Um, in the spring of 2016, the, the school district included a boundary change process to provide capacity relief and balanced enrollment in the southwest region. 
And the study back in 2016 included 11 elementary schools in the southwest area. Um, Johnny Cake and Edmonds Heights were included in that, in that study. They were part uh, around the table when we were looking at, uh, at doing some boundary changes at that time. The results of the study did not yield any changes to these two uh, schools, and it, and it did leave Johnny Cake Elementary overcrowded. Johnny Cake Elementary uh, needed some relief back then, and they still need the capacity relief. Um, in the initial planning for the new Chadwick Elementary, a boundary process was anticipated for this area to balance enrollment. Um, however, current enrollment projections indicate that upon completion, Chadwick Elementary will not have additional capacity to be able to help other schools in this area with, uh, with the capacity constraints they're experiencing. So for this reason, a boundary pro process that includes Chadwick is no longer supported. Um, but with that said, there, there are ways that Johnny Cake can, can still experience some capacity relief. And this is uh, expected to be done by moving programs uh, to help provide some capacity relief to some of the more overcrowded schools and also changing the attendance boundaries um, and looking at evaluating attendance boundary adjustments to help uh, further balance utilization. And by utilizing both strategies, Johnny Cake Elementary would receive relief and impact the fewest number of students um, as part of this process. So you could see that we have, uh, we have a map here that shows some of the schools in the area. Um, you could see that the yellow indicates schools that are 100 to 115 percent utilized, and so these schools are right at or over capacity. Chadwick is getting relief, like I said, through uh, some expansion or some construction there. Johnny Cake has is is more overcrowded than the yellow. They're 115 or 130 percent, and then but you could see the green schools are schools that do have some available capacity. So what we've identified is that there's an opportunity between Johnny Cake and Edmondson Heights to look at boundaries uh, between the two buildings to try to make things equitable in terms of a space that's available at the school. Um, talking a little bit about the program adjustment, because as I mentioned, one of the strategies to help give relief to Johnny Cake uh, is, to, uh, is by looking at program adjustment. Um, so some regional special education programs at Johnny Cake will relocate in coordination with this capacity relief study. Um, to help give to free up some space at Johnny Cake uh, Elementary. This movement will reduce enrollment, provide additional space at the school, and the, the calculations for all options includes 35 fewer students at Johnny Cake Elementary to reflect the program adjustment. So it's 35 students that are coming into the school uh, uh, from out of zone, uh, uh, possibly, and, that, and, and that, that program being relocated in their building is going to give Johnny Cake some free up classroom space and also fewer students inside the building. With making moving this program out of Johnny Cake Elementary, their capacity is going to go from 559 student capacity to 588, which uh, reflects the conversion of special education classrooms to standard elementary classrooms. So those classrooms that are being used for the special programs are going to be reused for standard uh, education, which is going to actually increase the available capacity at the school. So before the, this is a, a glimpse of the of the schools uh, before program adjustments are made are being made. So you can see Johnny Cake right here is 120 about 123 percent utilized. Edmondson Heights is 86 percent utilized right now. So you can see there's an imbalance between the two um, the two buildings, and one is overcrowded, and one has some available space. But you can see that the total utilization is 104 percent. That does uh, suggest that there is still is a need to, there's not a whole lot of space, even with, uh, with moving boundaries alone, it's, it's not going to help bring schools into the green, for example. By making a program adjustment, like, like I had mentioned in the prior slide, you'll see that Johnny Cake goes from 122% to about 110, 111% supply. And so that provides just a little bit more capacity at the school and the remainder of this imbalance can be resolved through uh, boundary adjustments, which this committee has been focused on over the past couple of meetings. So what special education programs and services are being relocated? Uh, it's been a common question, a common theme that the committee has been talking about and uh, questions have 
from the public. So Johnny Cake currently hosts a regional special education program, and this program provides services to students outside of general education from throughout the region. Um, as part of this past relief study, the regional program specific to Johnny Cake Elementary will be relocated, like I mentioned. This does not include students who are participating in general education curriculum receiving small group pullout type of programs. So these are students who, who have classrooms dedicated for the, for the program, and, those, and, and as those students, those students are relocated, those classrooms are going to be available as well with the increase give this path, like I had mentioned. Our objectives in this process is to have a community-based conference and boundary study um, with the focus on providing capacity relief to Johnny Cake Elementary School um, to create viable and successful boundaries to effectively utilize capacity and to support diversity among schools that reflect the community and the school system. We have rules to follow and considerations, and these are basically um, listed here on the next couple of slides. So these are what we always orient the committee and the public to to help answer the question, should we make an adjustment here or there? Or if you're looking at a couple of different scenarios or options, you ask yourself, which one better adheres to these considerations, these rules? The best plan is going to be one that best adheres and, uh, and, and achieves uh, uh, the adherence to these, to these rules. And these are to maintain the continuity of neighborhood, maintain your, maintaining or increasing the diversity among schools to reflect the diversity of the region and the school system, the impact of transportation and pedestrian patterns on students, so look where walkers are and things like that, minimizing the number of times any, indiv any individual students are reassigned. So we want to try to avoid students who have recently been reassigned and moving them again. That's not part of, that's not in play in this part of this process, but uh, we are looking at the number of students that are being impacted in this scenario, trying to accomplish our objectives while also moving as few students as possible. Make efficient use of, capac of capacity in effective schools to so try to balance utilization among the buildings. Not only looking at current students, but also looking at the long-term enrollment and capacity trends and future capital plans. So where are future, uh, how is the enrollment projected to, to look in the next 10 years? And, um, and that may be something to be, uh, be as proactive as possible in creating a, a recommendation. Location of feeder school boundaries and continuity of feeder patterns. So we're only looking at making changes to elementaries as part of this process. There are no middle school or high school adjustments that are incorporated in any of the work that we're doing at, at these, around these tables. Um, but we are looking at what the impact is on feeder pattern. So if a school does get split, uh, what's the percentage of a school that goes from one middle uh, elementary to middle school? If it gets split, what's the percentage that goes to two different middle schools? And things like that. Phasing in boundary changes by grade level for high school, so that's not in play for this elementary-based uh, study. And additional considerations are to use geographic features such as railroads, creeks, and major highways. So looking at uh, thinking about safety and security of students, trying to minimize the number of times students have to walk across a busy road, even if there's traffic uh, guards and things like crossing guards. Uh, you know, the, the fewer times a student has to walk across a major road, it's the, the better, and there's even further uh, ensures safety of children. So what work has been done today? Uh, the committee has met three times since January and has spent many hours reviewing information. Uh, they re reviewed fair, four variations of draft up, up, up till now, and they've looked at a lot of data and information, including enrollment, capacity, uh, zoning, and uh, aerial photography, looking at uh, demographic information about the students and walk zones. And you'll, you'll notice in the back, in addition to map, there are some tables that are printed off. That, that, are, that accompany the map. And we, we have several committee members here tonight that can help you guys as members of the public uh, uh, interpret those tables, as well as myself and uh, other people from our staff here as well. So if you have any questions about the numbers and what the numbers are saying or how to read the numbers, um, there's, there are people here that can help you interpret those. Um, it's important to note that options are considered draft throughout the entire process. And um, these, these maps, can change, and based on uh, public input and further study by the committee, there's there's potential that the that a new option could be created or maybe a modification to an option. Um, and uh, 
as, as the process comes to, uh, to closure after the next meeting. The committee's charge is to recommend one option to the superintendent who will present it to the Board of Education. Um, so the, uh, the community superintendent will be bringing your recommendation as a committee to the, uh, to the Board of Education for their, their consideration. And it's important to note, nothing is final until the board approves a plan. So even as when it's out of the committee's hands and goes to the board, um, they, have a, they have the opportunity to make changes if they feel necessary. When you look at the maps, you'll notice the black and white dashed outlines look like little small, uh, small subsets of an attendance area. These are what we call planning blocks. So these are like the building blocks for boundary changes. These are, uh, we have information that's on the maps that shows you the planning block number, as well as the number of students that live inside each boundary that goes to their zone school. And the committee uses these as basically building blocks to determine um, can we move, if we move this area one way or the other, how many students would that be? And those, those planning block data, the labels on there show them and show you as a members of the public how many kids live in these various smaller areas uh, that, are, that are throughout these, the, the study area in the various areas. So um, as the committee has been doing their work, they're basically looking at moving planning blocks one way or the other to help accomplish their objectives. As I said, we have statistics that are uh, pertinent to the study that accompany the maps. And these are the same data and information that the committee has been looking at when they, as they are examining options. So just a quick preview, you'll see that you'll have information on the schools, what their capacity is and their grade configurations. You have a lot of information about enrollment um, and how many students live in and attend out and how many, how many uh, seats they have or, or if it's uh, 81, minus 81, that means they have 81 available seats. 127 means they are 127 seats over capacity. And, uh, and so we can help interpret this if, you, if you'd like, um, if, if you have any questions about, about the statistics in these tables. For each option, you see we have an estimated enrollment for each option. This shows you the total number of students that are estimated to be in the building in each particular option. This first, uh, uh, the yellow column shows you what the current enrollment is, and each subsequent column shows you what the option would be, what we expect in terms of uh, enrollment showing up at the schools. And then this is another table that shows the same thing as estimated enrollment, but it puts it in terms of utilization percentage. So what percentage, what's the percent full of the building? And so you can see we get 86% at Edmondson Heights, 111% at Johnny Cake currently. And each option, there's, uh, we bring some relief, more of a balance than what currently exists. All the way out to option four, which they're, both of them are under 100, and these other ones are just slightly at 100 or slightly over 100%. Percent minority is something that we've been looking at, and there's really no significant impact on the percent minority either way of, of the district, of the study area as we, work, as we have worked through these scenarios, but you could see what the current percent minority is and how each option compares to, uh, to the current. Students impacted, so you could see how many total students would, are expected to be impacted in any particular scenario if it were to be implemented. And then, for example, we provided a, a detailed table here that basically shows that, you know, 79 students are moved from Johnny Cake to Edmondson Heights in option one. And we have these for each option, and, um, and you can explore that and, and see that. This shows you the feeder patterns. So um, Edmondson Heights feeds 100% into Southwest Academy. Johnny Cake currently is split between Southwest Academy and Woodlawn, a small split that exists between, uh, from, to middle schools um, for the current zones. And then we have this for each of the options. And you'll see that we have not created any additional split or ha there has been no impact on feeder patterns as a result of the boundaries that have been explored, um, the options that have been explored so far by this committee. So tonight, it's a gallery walk format. You'll see we have four copies of the maps. We have a, a copy back here. There's a set back here and a set over here, and then we also have a set over here if, if needed. And um, the committee members will be standing around these maps, as well as myself and staff, and then uh, BCPS staff, and we'd be happy to talk with you about the, the, the options or answer any questions that you may have as you're looking through these. 
Um, although, it's, although it's good to have discussion with you as members of the public, it's important to fill out the survey. And the survey is, is, is deployed online. And, um, and so it's really important that, that everybody on the committee and also staff and consultants, we can all benefit from your input. And that's best done through the survey. We also have uh, laptops on these tables in the back that have the surveys on there. If you feel like filling out the survey this evening, you can do so. But you don't have to. You can fill it out on, on, you can use your phone or any device and do it at home. And please encourage your neighbors and uh, other people that are um, in this region to participate and, uh, and give us some input. The survey will be available February 27th through midnight March 13th. So you have some time to participate. And you'll see that the survey, this is a link for the survey. You can go to bcps.org slash construction slash Johnny Cake ES. If you look on the main web page, you'll see a list of schools. It talks about capacity release studies on the left. And you can find the Johnny Cake uh, Elementary School release boundary change study there. And this survey will help us provide insight on the public's thoughts and get some further input from the public on your thoughts on this. It's important when you start looking at these maps and looking at the uh, and, and participating in the survey to do it from an objective point of view. Um, we're trying, we're looking for constructive information. So if if you if you're looking at the maps and you see you don't like any of the four options or something like that, tell us what what you think may make the maps better. What 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 feedback do you have as it relates to the, those considerations and rules? Because that's what this committee is focused on as well as us as consultants. We're really focused on a plan that best adheres to the policies and rules established by the school district. So um, all the materials that we have shared with the committee up to this point are available online. So if you want to go back and see what happened on meeting one, meeting two, meeting three, you can go online and look at it. And there's even the video clips, which are really nice that the district does, is gives you, the, they have recorded, the meeting's all recorded. So you can go on there and watch the, the meetings and, and, and view the meetings. If you have, if you'd like to email in addition to the public uh, survey, you can always email the committee with input at johnnycakereleasestudy at bcps.org. That's another, another avenue to provide input. And um, the, the public may email comments to the Boundary Study Committee and these comments are logged and we keep track of the comments and feedback. But, the, but tonight, the, the, the survey is the most important thing to take home with you and, uh, as, a, as, a, your, as a sort of homework for you as members of the public. Next steps, we'll be meeting back with the committee in April. We'll be giving them a summary report on the public input session and the survey. <clears throat> and then the, the committee is going to be looking to finalize the recommendation at that meeting. They may decide to make adjustments based on input that we receive, but we will be encouraging them to only make changes if it brings us closer to adhering to those considerations and rules. And as I laid out in the timeline, board recommendation will be in May, board pub, uh, May 7th, public hearing will be May 15th, and then the, the board will vote on a plan on June the 11th. So with that said, We'll invite you to come to the maps and the members of the committee. We have plenty of people here to help talk with you about the, about the maps and the, and the numbers and answer any questions you have. And we really appreciate you all coming out to this meeting tonight and uh, look forward to talking with you around the maps. Okay? Talk to you soon.